They are an encouragement to us. They're an encouragement to us. In the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures, there were hundreds of prophecies about the coming of the Messiah that we now know was fulfilled in Christ. Prophecies about where he would be born, what he would do for people. Prophecies about someone close to him would betray him. Even prophecies about very things that the Messiah would say. While these words here were not literally prophesied that he would speak those exact words, the action of what he did here on the cross, saying, Father, forgive them, this was a fulfillment of prophecy from the Old Testament. So in the book of Isaiah, 53, verse 12, God, through the prophet Isaiah, says this about the coming Messiah. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. I don't know if you know what intercession is. I'll tell you. Intercession is the act of intervening on behalf of another person or the action of saying a prayer on behalf of another person. So here on the cross, we see Jesus, the Messiah, doing both parts He is both intervening, paying the price for our sins because we could not pay them ourselves, and he was praying on behalf of someone else, praying on behalf of those who were actually killing him in the moment and praying on behalf of all of us who would ever sin against him in our lives. He was an intercessor in that moment. J.C. Ryle, the famous Anglican bishop, said this, While the blood of the greatest sacrifice started to flow, the greatest of all high priests started to intercede. It's awesome. So how is this encouraging today? (laughs) Well, because Jesus continues to intercede for us. He continues to pray for us, not just for our forgiveness, but for our strength and our power and our comfort and our hope in him. One of the primary roles of Jesus is to intercede on our behalf. We we learn this from the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. Hebrews 7, 23 through 25 says this, there were many priests under the old system. So under the old Jewish system, there was priest after priest after priest, for death prevented them from remaining in office. But because Jesus lives forever, His priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Is that not amazing? Like think of all the people in the history of humanity that you would want to pray for you in your time of need. And that person, no matter how godly they are, no matter how great they can pray, pales in comparison to Jesus Christ himself interceding for you in your very moment of need. That as a believer in Jesus, in the midst of whatever you are going through, whatever you're required to face, Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is interceding on your behalf. He's praying that you would have the strength to endure and power over temptation and comfort in your hurting and that your hope would remain firmly anchored in his love alone, that if no one else knows what you're going through and no one else ever prays for you, Jesus lives forever to intercede on your behalf. That should encourage someone today, should encourage our soul that he lives to intercede for those who believe. But listen, even if you don't believe, he still intercedes for you too. He intercedes for you too. He's praying to the Father the very prayer he prayed on the cross. That if you're here today and you've not put your faith in Jesus, here's what Jesus, this moment, is praying for you. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. He's pleading for you to come to salvation by faith in 
him.